Hey guys, so last time I gave you a question and the question was what should carbon do to become a stable noble gas and you had two options. So I asked you to think whether carbon would like to become a helium atom or it would like to become a neon atom, right? Okay, so I think you should have pondered over the concept and you should have got some idea. In case you did, it's well and good. Otherwise, let's begin now. So let us consider the first case. The first case is if carbon tries to become helium atom. So carbon is 2,4, right? And helium is only 2. So if carbon has to become a helium atom, what should carbon do? Carbon should be losing 4 electrons. Am I right? So we need to take out 4 electrons from carbon to make it look like helium. Now, I have a question for you. You know, right, there are so many positive in the center of the nucleus and there are negatives which are revolving around the nucleus. What do you think? Is it very, very easy to take out one electron from the atom? Like without spending even a single penny, can I simply take out the electron? Guys, listen here. Electrons are negative, you know. Nucleus is positive, you know. So, electrons are always happily attached to the nucleus. They are always, always, always in a stable position with respect to the nucleus. So, if you want to take out the electron out of the atom, you need to provide lots of energy. Okay? So, let's try to understand this with the help of an example. Let's consider the protons will be acting as teachers. Okay? The electrons will be acting as students and the atom will be acting as a class. Now, I have described a, a particular example for you to understand nicely. Let us say there is a class which has six teachers. Okay, there are six teachers and there are six students. So what do you think should be the situation of class? Can I say here all six teachers have a good hold on all the six students? So if let's say any one of the student is thinking to go out don't you think it's gonna be very very tough because six teachers are taking care of six students very very nicely so none of them can easily escape out of the class but let's say somehow the other one of the student is going out of the class let's just assume this happens okay but this is very clear lots of hard work is required to do that so if this if the student wants to go out he needs to do lots of hard work to go out right now what will be the second case now the second case is the teachers are six so none of the teachers went out of the class the teachers are six but since one student has gone out of the class we are left with one two three four five students okay so six teachers five students now, don't you think the strictness in class will be even more because as soon as one of the student escaped out, teachers become more careful. So the strictness is more in class. Now, let's say if another student has to go out of the class, don't you think more, more hard work is required for the other kid to go out? I hope you agree. Let us again assume, suppose this student is also, one another student is also going out of the class. Let's say this student escaped out of the class. So now what's the next situation? Next situation is we are left with the same number of teachers, but now we have one, two, three, four students only. That means we have six teachers and four students. Now think about the situation when the student has to escape. The situation is bad. I mean, the student will literally cry to go out of the class. Okay, don't worry. Let's just assume one more student escapes out. Now you're left with six teachers, but just three students. Imagine the situation, man. Let us say one more is going out. Now imagine the situation. There are six teachers and just two students. Don't you think, I mean, if he was like this here, he should be like this here, like this, and almost he should start crying if he has to escape out of the class, right? Now you might be thinking why I give you this example. Let's correlate the situation with carbon. Let's say this is the nucleus of carbon having six protons, and you know there are six electrons. So one, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6, right? So 6 positive, 6 negative situation is very good. Positive are attracting the negatives very, very tightly. Protons are tightly holding the electrons. So if you want to take out an electron, lots of energy is required. Let us say the energy is 10 joules. Let me be clear guys, energy is not 10 joules. This I am just writing to give you an example. So suppose energy required is 10 joules. Now as per we did in the previous example, suppose one electron goes out. So how many protons? 6. How many electrons? 5. So don't you think more positive is there? So more will be the attraction. That means electron will be more tightly held. That means now if you want to take out the electron, you need to provide even double the amount of energy. Let us say it is 20 joules. Let's consider further. Let us take one more electron out of the atom. How many teachers? 6. How many protons? 6. How many electrons? Just 4. So now 6 protons are very, very, very tightly held, uh, holding the six, uh, 4 electrons. So attraction is very, very high. Electrons are held very, very tightly. So the energy required will be for sure greater than 20 joules. Let's say 30 joules was required. Now finally, I want to take out one more electron. So when I'm taking out one more electron, there were six positive and three negative and I was taking out one electron. So attraction was too, too, too much. Electrons were held very, very tightly. So the energy was again very high. Let's say 40 joules. So this was carbon atom and with this whole procedure, now the carbon atom will become a helium atom. What do you think? The procedure was easy or what? So can we say that? When carbon is 2,4, it loses one electron to become C plus, which is 2,3. Energy required was 10. Now C plus, if it loses one more electron, it becomes C2 plus. Let's say energy required is 20. C2 plus, if loses electron to become C3 plus, energy required is 30. C3 plus loses one more electron to form C plus 4. Finally, energy required is 40. So from carbon, if you want to go to helium, the total amount of energy required is 40 plus 30 plus 20 plus 10. Don't you think it's such a huge amount? So, carbon wants to become helium, but it cannot afford to become helium. And thus your NCRT says, carbon requires a large amount of energy to remove four electrons. Leaving behind a carbocation, which has six protons, you saw here, the protons are six and it is just holding two electrons. So thus with these two examples I think it is clear that carbon has no tendency at all to lose four electrons. It's not possible for the carbon to lose four electrons. So what do you think? Should carbon be sad now? No, we have another option. What if carbon gains four electrons? So once again, I'll ask you to consider the same situation. Let's consider the teachers as protons and the students as electrons. How many teachers I have drawn? Six. How many students I have drawn? Six. So six teachers, six students, all good. Very, very nice strictness because one teacher is holding one, one electron each. Now let's say we are not taking out one student, but one student extra is coming to the class. So how many teachers? Again, six. How many students? Seven. Don't you think it will be tough for the teachers to take care of seven students? So teachers will be a little sad because, you know, it's tough for them to control the class. Let's say this happens and one another student is coming to the class. So how many teachers? Six. How many students? Eight. The teacher will be frustrated like him. Let's say one more is coming. How many teachers? Six. How many students? Nine. Now you know, right, the teachers will start crying because this is going to be a tough situation. Let us say finally one more electron is coming. How many teachers? Six. How many students? Ten. I don't think this class is at all stable because it will be lots of nuisance in the class. Right? I hope this example is okay. Now let's be serious and let's talk about carbon. So I was having carbon, protons were six, electrons were six. So protons are holding the electrons very nicely. Cool enough. Now let's say one electron comes and gets added to the carbon. Protons are 6, electrons are 7. So I can say 
it is very difficult for 6 positive to hold 7 negative. So the situation is a little unstable. Let's say one further electron is coming. So now 6 positive but 8 negative. So the situation becomes even worse. Let's say one more electron is coming. Protons are 6, electrons are 9. The situation is very very bad and the class is like, mm, no, it's not good. Let's say finally one more electron comes. Protons are 6, electrons are 10. So see, if you look carefully at the electronic configuration, the electronic configuration is 2,8, which is the configuration of a noble gas. So this C4-O form should be highly stab stable. But on the contrary, it is highly unstable. And I hope you got the reason why it is highly unstable. And thus your NCRT says, Carbon could have gained 4 electrons forming C4 and C4 minus anion. Agreed? But it would be difficult for the nucleus with just 6 protons to hold on to 10 electrons, that is 4 extra electrons. And because of this situation, carbon has lost the possibility of becoming C4 minus. Earlier in the previous example, I saw carbon has lost the possibility to become C4 plus. Now carbon has lost the possibility to become C4 minus. So what do you think carbon should do? So, But still carbon wants to become stable, right? Now try to figure out if there is any other option for carbon to become stable. And this we'll discuss in the next video. Thank you.